Hi folks, David Creative Craft House to show you a, a new cipher that uh, we've done and uh, I really kind of like it. It's called a linear slide rule type cipher as you can see here. Um, it's, it's really easy to use, really powerful too. Um, the, the power is really a function of uh, what, how complex your key phrase would be and I'll explain that to you later. Uh, and it, one of the nice features of it is that I've designed this thing to incorporate numbers and special characters. As you can see here, uh, most ciphers do not use these. And it can be a little awkward when you're trying to communicate um, a bunch of numbers in particular. Um, so uh, what we've got here, it's, it's a wood construction. Uh, you can see it's, we laser engraved all these symbols. So it's uh, very, very clear uh, they're never going to wear out. Um, and we've precisely assembled this thing. It's got a nice feel to it. it it's nine and a half inches long here. And I forget the width. It's a little over two inches, I think. We have what we call the body, which is this part here in the slide, uh, as you can see here. Um, the body contains essentially the text messages, or the English text, or the translated portion of your, your message. The slide will contain the coded portion of your message. And we're going to go through an example of uh, how to use this thing, um, so you can see uh, you can see how it works and how easy it is to use. Uh, let's suppose we want to communicate a message here, um, combination to a lock, perhaps. Maybe an escape room could use something like this. But a lock opens. And there's the combination seven twenty four thirteen. How would we use this cipher to encrypt something like that and decrypt it? Well, the first thing you've got to do in, in a cipher is pick a keyword. Um, it could be just a key letter, and that would be called a single substitution cipher. And you'll notice up here where it says key. Uh, if I just picked a single letter D, then everything would be offset on the alphabet, and um, any character in the message would be represented by the same coded letter over and over and over again. So that's not very secure. So we, we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to use a, a, a keyword or a key phrase. Let's suppose, and I've created an example, let's suppose we're going to use the, the keyword face. Well, here's how you use the, 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 this cipher, the linear cipher, using the keyword face. First of all, I'm going to, um, just to make it a little easier, and I've, I've laid out a worksheet here in which you can see three, three rows, the, the key, text, and code. Now the key is something that it repeats throughout the message. In this case, our key is, is face. So uh, what I've done is I've written the, the word face across the top. Now messages and coded messages are typically done in blocks of four letters or maybe five letters. You wouldn't want to do a message in word length because that would give away word length, making it easier to encode. But when messages are broken down into packets of four, in this case, or five, uh, there's no indication of where words start and words end. It makes it tougher to encode. So when encoding a message, the first thing we do is pick a keyword, a key phrase. It can be the more letters you have, the more complex it's going to be to decode. And re repeat it over the length of your message. Now this is a fairly short message. And then write the text. Now the text here is lock opens uh, 7-24-13. Now we're going to go through the process to get this code, which I've, which I've done ahead of time here, but I'm going to illustrate how it's done. What we're going to want to do is to start encoding our message is set the key on our cipher to the letter F. So here you can see that I have set the key to the letter F. Now what I'm going to do is take the first letter of my message, which is L, and come across here on the text portion to the letter L and then read down and the first encoded letter will be F. All right. Now, I don't, what I can do to make this even easier to encrypt is skip over to every F portion of the key and encrypt that particular letter. So I might go over, okay, uh, I'll keep the, without having to change the key on the cipher, I'll just move over to the next place that F appears on the key and encrypt the letter O. So the letter O becomes uh, encrypted to an I. And there you see that. I might come over here, the letter S 
becomes encrypted, uh, where is it, S to the letter M. Okay. All right, and then continue in the, in the four. To get a symbol, we move down to the bottom, bottom row. All right. So I come across to a four and read up until the this, this slide always has the encoded uh, letter or character. Four becomes an at sign. All right. So there you see the four becoming an at sign on my worksheet paper. Now I'll move over to the next letter of my key, which is A, and I will set the key to A, as you can see that I've done. Now I'll encode all the letters that have the key of A. The O becomes, in this case, an, an N. O becomes an N. Move over to the A here, and the P becomes an O. The 7, now I'm going to move up to the 7, becomes a semicolon. 7 becomes a semicolon. And the dash sign, I've even got a dash sign on here. The dash sign becomes a plus. A plus. Okay. So we'll continue in that process. Now I'll move my key to the uh, C. And I'll encode all the C, and I'll encode all the C letters. Not too long. I've got my message encoded. So the encoded message that we would send would be F N Z F I O B I M semicolon question mark percent add sign plus percent period. <laughs> okay, in blocks of four. The person on the other end to decode the message needs to know the key. Because if they know the key and they know the code, they're just going to work backwards. They're going to do the same thing you just did. But instead of working from the text message to get the code, they're going to work from the code to get the text message. So in the case here where they received this message, FNZF, they would, uh, to get the first letter, they would move to the key of F, find the F on the code line, and move up to the text row and see the letter L. Uh, F becomes an L, which is the first message of the text line. So the process is just as easy, it just goes in the other direction. Now you may be wondering why do we have this center row of letters here? Well, that's just an option to make things more complex if you want. You can at times um, uh, use the, instead of the top row of letters, use the bottom row of letters. You may even have a scheme where you're mixing them, every other one. It just adds to the complexity. It just gives you another optional tool that you may or may not want to use. Okay? There's actually many ways, and you could potentially think about how, how to use this cipher and arrange the numbers in different configurations, and there's a lot of material on the internet. Um, the, the basis of this is the uh, the, the um, uh, I forgot how to pronounce it. Viginaire, Viginaire cipher goes back uh, hundreds of years. Um, it's a polyalphabetic uh, substitution basis. Um, many ciphers use this kind of thing. Uh, we have it in the wheel, wheel fashion in the Alberti or the uh, Confederate Army ciphers. Uh, this is a linear fashion. Quite unusual. Um, the, the, the inspiration for this, by the way, was I came across um, Write up on the Dick Tracy cipher, Dick Tracy code secret code machine, uh, code secret code maker from 1939. It was put out by Lawrence um, Engineering, who made slide rules. Slide rules, of course, very popular up until the calculator. So uh, this is something I hope you can enjoy, and have some fun with, um, and it's made right here in our Hudson, Florida shop. Thanks, this is David Creative Craft House.